Tim Lockworthy from FIG live now on UST's and response, Tim, to that uh, stronger economic data and the potential on higher rates. This is interesting. We've seen, if anything, the yields pushing up uh, two-year unchanged at 130. The 10-year, though, up a point to 222. Now, just wondering whether the Fed Fund's futures have fundamentally recast the situation uh, as it was looking like yesterday, which is essentially to say one rate rise in June and then nothing for the rest of the year. Uh, good to be with you, Carson. Yes, look, I, I think at this stage the US 10-year bonds are holding steady at that 2.22 uh, level. Uh, that's towards the bottom of its recent range. Um, I, I think at this stage the, the market is well and truly priced in a Fed tightening next uh, week. Uh, the market's got a 90% chance of that occurring. If the, if the Fed felt that the market was mispricing that, I think they would have come out and jawboned to a certain extent to re-correct re that position. Mm -hmm. So I think we can say that that's, that's locked in. What, what will be more important will be how the market prices in any potential for a future rate tightening over the balance of the, the, the calendar year. At this mm -hmm. stage it's priced in at 0.38 or 38% percent uh, of a chance of a, of a further tightening, but obviously that'll be dependent on the data. Do you think they're mispriced at the moment, uh, given that the data is uh, pretty, I mean, OK, it's been looking softer of late, but then overnight you had the Atlanta Fed tipping the economy, growing at a 4% annualised pace in the June quarter. So that's, uh, you know, that's pretty enviable. Look, it is, and, and certainly there has been mixed data coming through, and I think the Fed's been able to look through that uh, and still very much telegraph that they, they intend to tighten, uh, and I think that's why the market's uh, pricing it that way. Non-farm payrolls tonight, uh, expectations of 185,000 compared to 211,000 last time, although any revision to that will be closely monitored, will be, will be important in the short term. Mm -hmm. Now, meanwhile, you've got that, uh, you know, th that story around the fiscal reform part of the growth story. Now, if that isn't likely to fire through 2017, what risks still are the market giving to even the, you know, the very real likelihood of a recession, potentially, on rate rises? Is that going to constrain the Fed timetable? Well, look, it, it will do, but as I said, Carson, it will be very dependent on how the, the data uh, falls over the next six months. Mm -hmm. um, at this stage, I think, as I said, they, they've telegraphed their intention uh, and the market is pricing in a, 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 a modest chance of a further rate, rate increase. It will be, as I said, dependent on the, on the data. Tim, domestically, it's been a fairly light on week for issuance, so what might we be looking forward to into next week? Look, I think in, in terms of the Australian market, the, the focus will be very much on the GDP data that's due uh, out in the middle of the week. Uh, forecast there of a 0.1% increase. Uh, the, the risk, I guess, is that uh, it could come in at a negative number, given the small marginal uh, margin of error. Uh, and if that is the case, then that potentially could be uh, 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 challenging for our market. Mm. Um, I think, you know, if you look at where the Aussie-US 10-year spread is at the moment, that's currently at around that 20 points. Uh, that's pretty much towards the 16-year the, the, the lows of, uh, uh, that it, uh, of where it's been trading in recent times. Uh, and uh, as a result of a, of a weaker-than-expected GDP number, that, that spread could contract further. Speaking of lows, eyeing further weakness in the AE dollar greenback cross, and you're saying we're no longer seen as high yield, and yet, in relative terms, does that story sort of wane, or is it still very much alive and well, even on one Fed rate rise? No, look, I think the overall trend has been that in that direction for a little while now. Certainly, you know, our, our status as a high yield uh, currency has, has waned. Uh, at the, at, given the, the, the lows that we are at the moment in terms of the, the 10 year spread, um, the, the, we've only been at these levels twice before, as I said, 16 years mm -hmm. ago and then the early 80s. Uh, and prior to that, it was uh, in a different regime when we didn't have bond tenders. So, you know, it, we are at significant levels. Uh, if the market were to fall to to, to below that 20, 20 point level, you know, I think we can, we can say that the, the currency will be at risk. Mm -hmm. uh, it's been held in a very tight range for the last uh, almost two years between sort of the, the low 70s, the high 70s, mm -hmm. uh, and a break of, uh, of that 70 region, given the, the, the propensity for a lot of hot money to be involved in the, in the Australian dollar, mm -hmm. uh, we could really overshoot to the downside as we did overshoot to the upside when we broke through parity to the US dollar not so long ago. Gosh, yeah, it does seem, uh, on the one hand, not so long ago, but then equally quite some time ago. And when was that, my gosh? Um, 2014 or thereabouts? Yeah, look, yeah. absolutely. And, and I think the other thing to keep in mind is that the last time that the, you know, the, 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 the 
spread between the Aussie US, US bonds were at, uh, at these levels, mm. the currency was sub, seven, uh, sub 65 cents. So, mm. uh, in fact, sorry, it was at sub 50 cents. It was at 47 cents. So, you know, there, there is potential for a, for a fair degree of uh, downward movement on the, on the currency. All right, a meltdown. Tim, thank you very much. Talk to you soon. Tim Thanks Lockworthy for having me. from FIG there in